Now what I'd like to do is a short video about Grass Valley's Mink. Now there's a free version of Mink, which you can get from Grass Valley. There's also a paid version. And you also get it if you get Grass Valley Edius. Mink is basically a way of looking at videos on your hard drive and cataloging them. So it's got a couple of advantages over just using good old fashioned Windows Explorer to look through stuff. The first advantage is that it understands video files. So if you go to look at a folder full of video files, you know, XD cam or whatever, it'll show you the video clips rather than just showing you a bunch of files and not understanding what they are. Second thing you can do with it is you can catalog stuff. So you can go through, put a bunch of clips into the program, tag them with all sorts of things and then catalog them. And the third thing which you can do in the paid version or the version you get with Edius is you can do a rough storyboard in there. So what you can do is throw a bunch of clips into it, mark some in and out points and then make up a rough edit which you can then export off to Edius or off to other programs. So let's have a quick look at all of that. So I'm just going to double click on Mink and it opens the program up. First thing you'll see, as it says, information board, which I tend to click don't show again because I don't need to see that stuff. Now, first thing you might say is Mink. Why Mink? What does that mean? The program is a Japanese program, so does it mean something in Japanese? Actually, I've been told that it's basically media sync compressed into one word, and that's where Mink came up from. Now, when you open it up, you get into the program here, and what you can see is you've got an area over here which says library at the top and folders at the bottom, big area in the middle where the clips are going to show up, and then there's an information area over here. First of all, you start off down here on the folder view. So I'm just going to open that up. You can see I've got some favorite folders which include the desktop, your standard pictures and video folders. You can add in places on your hard drive as favorites, so they always pop up there if you want to. Or you can just go to your hard drive and then look through the hard drive. So for example, I know that I've got some here on the video drive. If I go down here, I've actually got a folder which is full of all sorts of different types of footage. So I've got an AVCHD folder, which has got some eh, strangely AVCHD in them, Canon footage, some EDIUS footage, all sorts of stuff, red camera footage, loads and loads of different clips which I use for demonstrations over the many years. I can pop into any of these folders and then look at what's in them. Now, for example, I've got some footage of trains, which I do use all the time. If I go to that folder on the hard drive, what I've got in here is actually a copy of a card full of footage that was filmed on a Panasonic 151 camera. So it's a typical AVCHD folder. You go into that, then there's another folder, and there's another folder, and then eventually you get to the clips. The clips are these MTS things, and then there's lots of other gubbins in there which has been loaded up into that folder when I've loaded this stuff into other programs. And at least with AVCHD, I can pop this into icon mode and I can at least see the clips. Well, the nice thing about Mink is that I just go to that Richard Trains folder, click on it, and it shows me the clips immediately. I haven't had to drill down to the stream folder. It's not showing me all the other rubbish. It's literally just showing me the video clips. And I can take any of those and then have a look at them and play with them, do what I like with them. At the moment, I haven't got a preview window open, so if I double click on it, it pops up full screen. And then you can have a look at all the clips in that folder and see them full screen. You can play them with the, the old playback controls down here. You can take a snapshot, so I can take a still image of it, all that sort of thing. And I want to get back to that interface, I just click on the return button up here and it pops back to that interface. But if I'm working on one screen, as I am here, I can also click on this little square up in the top right here and it brings up a little preview window. So whenever I click on there, it brings that up, but I can see the rest of the interface. You'll notice with these three buttons up here, I can also collapse the Explorer side over there, or I can collapse the details over here if I don't need them. There is also a way where you can get that full screen preview to pop up on a second screen if you want to. So I'm gonna to go to the settings, which I could do by going to the heading that says settings or clicking on that little cog. Looking through these settings here, you can see there is one down the bottom here, which actually says, where do you want your full screen preview to be? Now, you'll notice I've got three screens on this computer because I like using three screens. And at the moment, number two is actually the main screen. And it's saying the full screen preview pops up on the same monitor as Mink, which it did. Let me choose that one instead. It's gonna pop up on monitor one, close this, go back to my footage, double click on it, and now in addition to being in that little window there, I've actually got a full screen playback 
of that picture. You can't see it because you can only see this one screen, but I have got a full screen playback of that on the screen which is on the right hand side. And of course I could change it to be left hand side or full screen here. It doesn't use black magic devices or any Grass Valley cards to get a picture out to a TV. It literally does everything on your computer screen because it's meant to be a quick way of doing a preview. And like I say, I can play that sort of thing, I can stop it, I can click this little button and it gives me the option of which channels I'm going to play. So this is only a stereo clip, so I've only got two channels, but say for example I've got a clip with multiple channels in it, like this one happens to be surround sound, suddenly I've got six channels and I can choose which one of those I want to hear, or I can just hide that thing. So, so far I'm just using it to look through my folders of stuff, let's go to XD cam footage, you can see I've got that same kind of footage which I've saved out in an XD cam format. Again, it's going through and it's drilling through the entire folder and just digging up the clips for me. Only time when this can cause a problem is, let's go back to the AVCHD stuff that I had. Let's take that AVCHD folder and put it in, say, the root of one of my drives, like this one. So rather than being inside a folder, I've literally copied it to the root of my hard drive. That's the F drive. So now what does Mink thinks on the F drive? All Mink can now see on the F drive is that footage. Because Mink is now saying, because that's in the root of the folder, just like it would be on an SD card coming off the camera, it's now just seeing that and it's not seeing anything else at all on the F drive. That happens with all sorts of formats. I put the BPAV folder for an XD cam in the root of a hard drive. You now won't be able to see anything else on that hard drive. If I had a card, popped it in the, in the computer, this would suddenly show me everything on that card. If I popped in a camera that's got a hard drive on it and plugged it in, it would now show me everything that's on that hard drive. But because it's in the root of this F drive, I can't see anything else. I can't see any of my other folders. If you look at the F drive, there are other folders, it can't see them because that AVCHD is in there. If I was to put that AVCHD in a subfolder, then come back to Mink. Now Mink hasn't noticed I've done anything. Let's right click on the computer and say refresh. Now you go back to it. Oh, suddenly I've got lots of stuff and my moved folder. If you remember my moved folder has got the HD thing in it. My move folder is now seen as a camera but I can see everything else. So that's something to bear in mind. If you ever copy the contents of your card from your camera and shove it in the root of your hard drive, that's all you'll ever see on there and you'll have to move it to another folder before you can carry on. When you're looking around a hard drive, you've got some nice little buttons up here. So for example, I can turn off all and then say, just show me video clips or just show me still images or just show me audio. My folder of train stuff hasn't got any stills or audio, so it doesn't show me anything, but that's quite nice. If you've got a folder, like I do film on a Panasonic GH4 a lot, and all the pictures get mixed in with the video clips. It's nice to be able to just tick that and say, show me the video clips and not still images. So that's the first thing you can do with it. You can actually use it to just look around and look at video clips and clips that you couldn't see in normal windows, because it shows just about every kind of video clip you can imagine. And they're adding new formats all the time. As I'm recording this in April 2017, they just added support for a couple of new formats into it. But it can do more than that.